Hello everybody and welcome to Work Against the Grain. My name is Jeff. So last week at the end of the video, I told you guys that this week we would be looking at some two-sided CNC machining. So I got all set up, have the project ready, began working on it Monday afternoon, maybe it was Tuesday, and all of a sudden in the email comes this month's Vectrec newsletter. Well, I have to tell you, I opened up the Vectrek newsletter and there it was, the mini grandfather clock. So now I had to make a choice. Do I do the two-sided machining or do I make an attempt at making this mini grandfather clock? The grandfather clock won out. It is just an absolutely magnificent piece. I cannot wait to show it to you. What I'd like to do during this video this week is to take you over to the board and show you what comes in the newsletter, the steps that I take to uh, lay out, if you will, my process for opening the newsletter, machining all of the parts, doing the assembly, and ultimately get the final project. Once again, this is a project uh, developed by Michael Tyler. The gentleman just seems to be a genius. Again, I want to point out that I'm not a Vectrek employee. I am just absolutely enamored with the software, with the product, and the things that it can make the CNC produce. So I want to step over here to the video board, show you some of the steps that I go through, and then at the end, we'll so show you some of the CNC machining, okay? So let's go over to the board and have a look. Okay, so in the first video here, as you can see, you get the Vectrek newsletter and it comes with a summary page, if you will, uh, showing the things that you're going to need, what it is you're going to produce, and a picture of the finished product. The second piece here is a diagram of all of the different parts labeled, uh, one to six, if you will, of how the final assembly will look and where the parts go. And it's really important to mark the parts as you machine them to make the final assembly part easier. The clock is actually made up, the project page is made up in two different sections. The first section here is the base, which I believe is pages three through six. And then you have the upper or the clock tower that is pages seven through 10. And then on page 11, there's some uh, materials list and uh, the final pages, some resources that I'll talk about in just a minute. So when you get your pages, print them out, have them on your workbench so that you can go step by step. He really provides a step by step uh, process of not only what to do as you machine the parts, but what to do to do the final assembly. As you look at the screenshot of my Vectrek software here, one of the things that you want to make sure of is that you get your feeds and speeds down to your machine. One of the things that I found out was the 90 degree bit was feeding at a very, very slow rate of speed. I think the thought there was to give it a, a really nice finish, but I just bumped that up a little bit and was able to produce it a little bit quicker. The other thing that's really, really neat is on the lower side, instead of using a 90 degree bit, I chose to use a 60 degree bit and it gave it just a little bit different detail, if you will, than what was in Michael's drawing. That's what else is nice about these Vectrek newsletter uh, tutorials and projects is that once you understand the relationship between your tool and the tool paths, and the piece that you're machining, you can change that up. You can give it different profiles, and it also gives you the ability, I learned a lot with this as it relates to making moldings, designing moldings, all of the things to make a box. Perhaps you wanna make some molding that goes around a, a, a baseboard or a closet or a shelf, uh, a bookshelf molding if your machine has the capacity to do it. 
lot of great information. Utilize the project files that Michael gives you. Look at the different tools. Analyze the different tool paths. And I think that you'll find you'll learn quite a bit more than just learning how to make this clock. A lot of great information within these project files that Vectrec and Michael Tyler provide. So thanks again very much. Then here on page 11 are some of the materials that were used, some of the paint, where he got the clock face, some of the other things that you're going to need. Now, you can paint this anything you want. I made mine as a prototype, this first one, just to make sure that I was doing everything properly. I made mine out of MDF, and I'm going to paint it, you know, probably this weekend. But um, the one that I'm going to make is probably going to be made out of uh, walnut, maple, something like that. But you can choose any finish that you'd like in the end. What else is nice is that the hole that the, the actual clock mechanism fits into appears to be a standard size hole. So there's multiple choices. I happen to have one, the, the one that I put in here, I happen to have in stock, if you will, and uh, uh, slid right in the hole. So those seem to be uh, very universal and you can get the size uh, face that you want, the letters that you want, the look that you want as it relates to your clock. Now on the final page here, there's some additional resources as it relates to Vectrex support. Um, this uh, tutorial is on the Vectrex webpage. It's in the free project section. There's also a link to the Vectrex forum that I certainly have had to go on and ask some questions about. It's a very, very helpful community. Folks just like us that are utilizing the Vectrex software uh, here on the forum to answer your questions. Maybe they have ran across something that you're running across and they can certainly help. And let me tell you, they're from all over the world. Very, very willing to help group of people. Very, very nice. And when it's all said and done, this is what we end up with. A 42 inch mini grandfather clock. Now again, I chose to make mine here out of MDF, kind of as a prototype. I wanted to make sure that before I invested in some really nice wood that the tool pads that I was using were made for my machine, uh, that the um, uh, speeds and feeds were correct, that the look was correct. I did on the top molding, for example, when I first made it, I didn't cut the miter perfectly. And so I was kind of glad that I made it out of MDF as a prototype because I learned something from that. The other thing that he suggests in the notes is utilizing screws or nails. I do have a pin nailer, so in areas where uh, it was needed, I also used the pin nailer in addition to the glue that sped up the process. I didn't have to wait for a lot of drying. And the pin nailer, the nail holes don't show up at all, so that was a, a really a great help and a nice tip that, that Michael gave us. So, Anyway, that's the project files. That's this month's Vectrek newsletter free project. Let's go back to the desk. We'll sum it all up and I'll show you some videos. Okay, so there you have it. This month's Vectrek free newsletter project. Thank you again, Michael Tyler. In the next videos, I'm going to show you some of the different CNC machining techniques that were used in this project half inch ball nose, a 90 degree V bit. There was some different um, uh, profile cutouts that you'll see. Michael uses this, uh, I don't know how to describe it, kind of a stair or a, um, it winds down. So as it does the profile, it doesn't just plunge a half or a, excuse me, a quarter inch, plunge down a quarter inch and go around, plunge down another quarter and go around it actually starts at the zero mark, maybe a little bit above, and it begins to spiral down. And then when it gets to the bottom, it leaves you some tabs, you pull it off the machine, you cut the tabs, absolutely beautiful. So once again, not a Vectrek employee, just absolutely love the software. Thank you again to Vectrek. Enjoy the CNC machining videos. I really thank you guys for watching. This is Work Against the Grain. My name is Jeff.